welcome to Badge Family Homestead. Today we're going to talk about the Hovabator Incubator. Um, the model is uh, the Genesis 1588. We have an older one that we got about six years ago and we loved it so much that we decided to buy a second one here. So that way we can do duck eggs and chicken eggs at the same time or we can just do more chickens than before. So we could hatch out um, potentially 84 chicks instead of 42 because that's how many the um, egg turner will hold. So I'm going to set our old one aside and we're going to unpackage our new Ovibator Genesis 1588. There it is. We get typically a 95% hash rate with our chickens and ducks. It's not quite as good. Those are a little more difficult to hatch out. This is our power source here. And this one um, is nice because it comes with the thermostat already attached to it and ready to go. It comes with a nice window so when it comes time for hatching you can see the little chicks hatching out of their shells and that's always really fun. So we're going to set the lips aside and I would just like to talk about some of the pros and cons with the Hovabator that we found over our years of using it. Um, setup is really simple as you are about to see. I'm going to go through that with you. Um, the Hovabator maintains a consistent temperature. It fluctuates unless you open the incubator up, then it will drop a little bit. Um, it's easy to clean and like I said, we liked it so much that we bought a second one just like it. This is our brand new one, squeaky clean, so nice. Um, one con that we um, have noticed is the only way to add more water to your water tray is by actually opening your incubator up. Um, some other incubators we've seen, there's like a little hole in the side where you can put water in. Um, that would, that's probably the only thing that I would change about this incubator if I could change anything. And another thing was with this old one that we got, when we first got it, um, we had to replace, we had to replace the control center because we let it get a little bit too humid when the chicks were hatching out. So it fogged up and the control panel, it stopped working. So we contacted Hovabator and they actually replaced that for free. So awesome. Thank you Hovabator. Um, okay, so preparing your incubator, uh, you need to find a place in your house that is free of drafts and direct sunlight. We have a spot in our pole barn that is insulated and heated and there's no drafts. It's very nice out here. We're spreading our seeds in here and we're going to hatch our chicks out over here. Okay, so let's put this baby together. Here's our watering tray. It has four troughs. There's trough number one, two, three, and four. Let me show them to you up close. Okay, can you see it? Trough number one right here, that is the one you're going to keep filled while the eggs are in the setting position. And when the eggs begin to hatch, um, well, actually before they start to hatch on day 20, you're going to fill trough one and trough two up. Now, the reason you fill trough one up while it's in setting is because your goal is to keep the humidity between 45 and 55 percent. And on day 20, two days before the eggs begin to hatch, you want to bring up the humidity so that your target is between 55 and 65 percent. 
Um, if you go under that, the chicks might not be able to get out of the shell. They can get trapped inside. And if you go over that, they may become trapped because they don't have enough oxygen in their little air pocket. Um, the second thing that can happen is if you get it too humid is you can fog up this um, control unit right here. And we actually did that with our um, first hatch. We, um, we had it at, at about 75 to 80% humidity and the whole thing fogged up. And because I uh, didn't realize what was going on, um, it just it got too humid. There was too much water in our water trough and when the chicks began to hatch out, the humidity actually goes up. So you need to be really careful about that. Um, so anyway, if it gets too humid, you can ruin your incubator. Thankfully, um, Hova Beta replaced that control unit for free for us. Okay, so we have our water trough in here. I'm now going to take my water and I'm going to fill trough number one up. Okay, um, now that that's full, I'm going to take the incubator floor, place that on top of it. Okay, after that, um, I'm going to find the notch. There's a little notch in the side here. I'm actually, we want to put our egg turner in here and line this cord up with the notch that's in the side of the incubator. It's in here, it's in here perfect. Okay. So we've got our egg turner in here now. Um, now we're going to take our lid. And on the lid, there is a notch right here. You want to place that right where our cord from the egg turner comes out so conveniently. Okay, everything's nice and tight and ready to go. Now we're going to um, plug in the egg turner. Well, actually, we're not going to plug the egg turner in yet. We're going to plug in our unit to get it heated up. We want it. To be 99.5 degrees I'm Fahrenheit. I'm going to do a close up and show you how to adjust your temperature on this because when you get the Hovabator, it comes set to 100 degrees. We like to bring it down a half a degree just in case it happens to fluctuate a little bit, which it, it, it shouldn't, it hasn't in the past, but just be careful. So we're going to get it plugged in and then we're going to set the temperature. Okay, our incubator works, yay! And it, um, this just displays uh, the day that it's on, the current temperature, the current humidity, and um, it's saying that it's set to 100 degrees, and then it tells you that the current temperature is 62 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to lower it by half a degree. So you want to Hit this twice, and then you can bring it down to what we want. It's gonna flash a few times, and then that's where it's gonna set it at. So now, um, we need to wait until the temperature of this comes up to 99.5, and that is when we will place the eggs, and also go over some um, tips and tricks to picking out the eggs that you put in your incubator. Choosing good eggs to place in your incubator is critical to getting a good hatch rate. So you want to pick the freshest, cleanest eggs to place. And there's a few other things that you want to look out for when you're picking your eggs out. Sometimes eggs will get something called a pimple on them. It's just extra calcium on the egg. And that's not something you would want to put in your incubator. Um, sometimes they have like uh, water spots on them like that. I wouldn't put that one in either. The egg is probably not viable. Um, cracks, any eggs that have any slight little crack in them. This one has a small crack, if you can see it there. Um, definitely not eggs with cracks in them or very dirty eggs. Um, your goal is to leave the bloom intact. So if you have an egg that's got some crud on it, like, like this egg's got some crud on it, I would just take 
a dry kitchen scrubby and just kind of buff it off and get that debris off of here but you're still leaving the bloom intact and uh, it will be just fine i would place in the incubator like that um there have been times where i have used a damp cloth to just kind of spot clean some of the eggs that had a little poop on them or something and those eggs have hatched out for me but if i can avoid that if i have enough eggs enough clean eggs to get in my incubator then i choose um the cleanest eggs that i can find you want their shape to be as symmetrical as possible um let's see what's a real nice this is a real this one has a very nice shape to it um, most of these do I've picked most of these to place in the incubator so, so we don't want to go over seven days old for hatching um, after that they start getting kind of old and the number of chicks that hatch out successfully without deformities um, goes down the older the eggs get so seven days or younger is what we choose for that we're actually pretty excited. We have um, three eggs here from our big uh, black cochin chicken. She's mixed, um, or she breeds with our crested Polish, and those are gonna be really fun little chicks to watch hatch out. And we have blue eggs. Those are our Easter eggers. Those are always so much fun. They're, um, they're all different colors, and the kids love naming them. Um, some of these, there's some light colored ones in here too. Those, um, some of those are Easter eggers. Some of those are a cross. We have an Easter egger rooster and he breeds with um, some of our Jersey Giants. Um, we also have a couple leghorns. Those are the, the white eggs that we have. Um, oh, silver laced Wyandots. Those are some of our favorites. We haven't hatched out any uh, silver laced wine dots mixed with Easter eggers yet so it should be really fun to see what those chicks come out looking like and just how they grow and what their colors end up being so um, that'll be really fun we hope you join us um, March they should be hatching out on um, March 18th March 16th is the day that we will take the eggs out of the egg turner and get ready to watch the chicks hatch a couple days after. So March 18th should be the big day. Um, typically, um, there is one early chick that hatches, sometimes the full day early, and then the rest of the chicks follow after that one. So we might have our first chick on March 19th. Um, if not, then March 20, we will get to meet these little fluffy critters, and that'll be just so much fun. Our incubator is 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit. We can now put the eggs in. This is my oldest daughter, Skyla. My d middle daughter, Kaya. And my youngest daughter, Ella. And they would really like to join us to pick the eggs out that we place in our incubator. You guys excited? Yeah. What's your favorite part about hatching chicks out? The babies. Yeah? What about you? Um, watching them hatch the babies. Oh, that's fun. What about you, Ella? I know you love baby chicks. To pick one out. Oh, you like picking them out. I love watching all the different colors that we get. Oh. It is so exciting. And uh, seeing if we are right when we try to uh, gender check them with the wings, which we'll have to do another video on how to sex your chicks. That's a really, that's a nice tip when to you have. you store your eggs before you put them in the incubator, you want to store them with the pointy end down in the egg carton. And then when you move your eggs to the incubator, you want to put them in the egg rotator with the pointy end facing down as well, just like Skyla's doing. If you want to pick any of the eggs out of the other cartons too, you're welcome to grab one of those, okay? we've picked all of our chicken eggs out we're gonna put the lid on and we hope that you join us the end of March to watch these little fluffy cute chicks hatch out okay so just to go over a few things that I talked about during the video but I want to go over um, again 
So um, keeping your um, water trough full, you're gonna wanna fill tray number one about once every two days. Just keep track of the humidity um, on the on your gauge here. This this display is gonna tell you what your humidity is at. You do not wanna go over 55% when the eggs are in their setting stage. And you do not want to go under 45%. And then again, when the eggs are in their hatching stage, you want your humidity to be between 55 and 65%. Try not to go under 55, try not to go over 65. If you have only added water to trough number one and you find that your humidity level is rising above 55%, while it's in the setting time, then it's okay to remove this plug to let out some of that humidity. Your heat will stay the set temperature. Um, and then when you notice that it um, starts coming back down and your humidity is in, that, in between that 45 and 55% range, you can put your plug back in, but do not add more water unless you notice it dropping below 45%. If you are using the automatic egg turner, which we love, um, when you get to day 20, you're gonna wanna take all of your eggs out of the egg turner and place them on your incubator floor. Having chicks hatch out in the egg turner is a no bueno, it is no good. You want them to be um, on their sides, laying on their sides on the incubator floor to safely hatch out so they don't get stuck or any other uh, uh, tragedies happen. Day 21, you might see your first chick. Uh, we typically notice a 48 hour window from the time the first chick hatches until the last chick hatches. Um, after about 48 hours, the chances of any more hatching out goes down quite a bit. Um, let's see. So uh, you want to make sure that you don't open your incubator um, very often when the chicks are hatching out. And it's going to be about a 48 hour window from the time the first chick hatches until the last chick hatches out. Um, also make sure that you have filled uh, uh, trough number two when you get to day 20 so that it's humid enough in the incubator for your chicks to hatch out. Um, if you would like to join us, we are going to record our chicks hatching out. Um, that should be on March 18th. So um, please like and subscribe and join us to see what kind of cute little fluffy surprises we have in our incubator. If you have any questions, Until next time, happy hatching.